Okay, so this is Windows on Raspberry Pi, episode 33. And uh, this is thanks to Red Fox for letting me know about this. Uh, this new tool by BotSpot, WOR-Flasher, uh, is a way of installing Windows 10 or Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi, uh, but also using a Raspberry Pi as well. And this is the first time this has been made so easy. So let's switch into screen capture. So traditionally you always had to use a Windows computer to install Windows on Raspberry Pi. Uh, but then more recently this guide came out on the official WOR project site and uh, it had a lot of steps in it and there was various different things uh, that you had to run through. Well BotSpot, the creator of PyApps, has managed to make this all very, very straightforward. So if we do a search for BotSpot WOR-Flasher, it will bring us to this page so you can see we can click on here. And there's lots of extra details in here, so have a read through uh, if you want to, but I'm just gonna concentrate on installing Windows. So you can see from the information here, in theory, this tool will run correctly on any Debian-based Linux, ARM, or x86. However, this tool has only been tested to run correctly on Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. So this is Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, and I've done a clean install, and I've just changed the desktop and a few other things, but it is a clean install. So first up, we need to go to this line, that download WOR Flasher, and just left click on here and you can see it says copied. Control Alt T will give us a terminal and we can paste that text in there and you can see that it's already done that bit. The next bit you need to do is copy this bit here and then go back to terminal, right click and paste and you can see it runs through all the installation and you can see we've got this pop up in the middle of the screen. Welcome to Windows on Raspberry. Uh, and it's already selected for Windows 11. So what I can do is minimize a few of these bits just to make it look a bit tidier. And I'm gonna try installing it on this crucial 240 gig SSD drive. Uh, I've got my Ugreen SATA to USB cable, which seems to have been really reliable. Since I've been using this, uh, I've found it to be excellent. Right, so let's slot that in here and then pop the USB 3 cable in so it recognizes the drive. Okay, so that's recognized. So I'm gonna hit cancel here and because uh, I've got some extra instructions uh, from Red Fox and this was just before you start, do sudo apt install UDF tools. So I'm gonna close this down. Don't worry that there's an error. And in the terminal, I've typed sudo apt install UDF tools. Now just in case, I'm gonna reboot. And to be ultra careful, I'm going to format the drive that's in there. Uh, I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager to do that. I often do this. So let's open a terminal and type in sudo apt install rpi imager. And yes. Okay, so that's installed. So let's go for the accessories and imager. Choose OS and arrays. Choose storage. And you can see the only storage that's external to the operating system is my 240 gig SSD. So let's click on that, hit right, and that will just clear everything off. So let's close that down and call up that last command to launch that tool again. So it's this one here, WR flasher install. And I can minimize this to make it look a bit tidier. So I'm installing Windows 11. If I click on the drop down, you can see Windows 10 or there's custom options, but I'm gonna to stick to Windows 11. Uh, it is a Pi 4, then I'm doing it on my eight gig Pi 4. But there is also option for Pi 3 and Pi 2. So let's hit next. So my language is English. Next, choose device. So it's picked up the Ugreen cable look and it tells me that it is the 240 gig drive. So next. So this is my config.txt. Uh, so if I wanted to edit anything, I could add it in here, but you can do it later on. And I've got that in another Windows on Raspberry Pi video, how to basically still change the config.txt because it got more difficult in later builds, but with the right tool is very simple, but I'm gonna leave everything as is. So when I hit flash, it's gonna take quite some time because it's gonna have to download that whole image of Windows. Uh, and then flash it to the SSD drive. So let's hit flash and uh, I'll see you quite a bit later. And my advice would be just to let all of this run. Don't be tempted to press anything, uh, use anything else, just let it all run on its own.
Okay, so that's all done because it's come up with this splash screen and uh, all I need to do now is shut down, remove the SD card and leave the SSD plugged in. So it's just gonna boot from the SSD drive. So let's hit close and shut down. Okay, so that's shut down now. So I'm gonna switch off. I'm gonna remove the SD card and I'm gonna boot up from the USB SSD drive. So let's switch on. And all this is very different to what I've known from before of installing Windows on Raspberry Pi. So whether this is bits that have been added in by BotSpot or whether this is the new way of installing it, but I'm just gonna leave it and let it go all the way through. So select the addition of Windows. Well, I picked Windows 11 before, but it's saying Windows 10, so I'm just gonna hit install because that's the only option it's giving me. And I reckon the whole installation could probably be done in about two hours. Uh, I wasn't really sat by it. I just let it do its thing and every now and then I'd click the button, but there was nothing extra you had to do really. Okay, so it's all done. There was no extra intervention needed. It was just a normal sort of installation of Windows after that point. And uh, I've checked for updates. I've done several updates, restarted it just to check everything's working and everything is working absolutely fine. Uh, I've got the web browser here. So check out this Windows 11 video which shows you how to overclock and a few extra things and shows Windows 11 running. Actually this also shows Windows 11 running as well. Um, but check out the playlist. Uh, there's loads of things I've had running. Programs, games, emulators, all sorts of things. So I have a separate one uh, for WOR. I'm going to have to change the name of this to Windows 11 really. Uh, but I've got about well 45 videos in there. Uh, and if you want to be able to use Wi-Fi with this build, there's a couple of suggestions on how you can do that because at the moment only Ethernet is officially supported. And Windows on Raspberry Pi 4 has come so far since the early days. Uh, so if I go right back to the start, so this video, Raspberry Pi 4 running Windows uh, was, how long ago was this? So February 2020, so quite a while ago we did that. And over the time, various different things have been improved and added. Uh, there's even videos where I was using two power supplies because we had to use on-the-go adapters and uh, that was a real pain. But uh, yeah, so great work to BotSpot for creating this. Uh, just so impressive. And I can't believe how easy that whole process was made. Uh, especially as we're doing it on a Raspberry Pi and not having to use a Windows computer. Uh, BotSpot has contributed so much to the Pi 4. Uh, Pi apps I use all the time is just a brilliant app for installing various different things. But check out the GitHub for information on that. Uh, the Windows on Raspberry Pi team have done a load of great work. And also I've got a video on how to join the Discord. Uh, if you want to find out more about Windows 10, Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 4, definitely join the Discord. There are some tools which are for overclocking and various other things and loads of tips. People will help you out if you, if you get stuck on something. But to be honest, this was so easy, I, I really can't believe it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps. Please like and subscribe. This is the official Raspberry Pi USB-C adapter. This is my SSD drive, which has got Windows 10 on it. That's my mouse and keyboard trackpad, and it's going through the USB-C input. Uh, and then we've got HDMI out, obviously. So at the moment, I'm not using this extra power, but you can use both lots of power at the same time. Again, I'm not advising anybody do this, read thoroughly through it, but I did see a guide that said that it takes as much power as it feels it needs through the GPIO pins. I'm only using a five volt adapter, so it shouldn't overload it, but I don't want to brick anybody's pie and I don't want anybody sort of messing about with this if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so as I say, it's your equipment, do, do, do this at your own risk.